Today on Oz, the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson. Unbelievable. How she lost a whopping 55 pounds. It's taken me 54 years to try and do it, and this time I've done it. Why she's celebrating a new shot at life. And the scandal that rocked the royal family. How will she respond to the allegations? Coming up next on Dr. Oz. For the past three decades, Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, has been one of the most scrutinized women in the world. Her friendship with Princess Diana, her marriage with Prince Andrew, and her fluctuating weight have made it headlines for years. Well, today, she's here to share how she recently lost 55 pounds. It is the happiest and the healthiest she's been in a very long time. Please welcome Sarah, the Duchess of York. Thank you very much. That Thank you. Unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> unbelievable. You look very dapper, Dan, too. Yeah, well, I, my, my weight hasn't changed nice very much. Well, you're very kind. No, no, I wanted nice a pocket suit. ship, but they wouldn't give me one. Oh, you see, I like, I like double vents. Well, thank yeah. you very much. She's a very, cool. very stylish woman. I put Andrew in double vents. You do? Yeah. We're going to talk about Andrew in a second. Okay. You must be very jealous Hello. of your beauty right now. Wow, you've got wonderful. a great audience. Yes, so I love the audience. Yeah, Always okay. Have. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> Dr. Oz. The glow you have, not just the 55 pounds you've lost, but the energy you have is remarkable. I mean, how do thank you do you. it? Uh, well, thank you so much for noticing. Uh, when I uh, lost my 55 pounds at 55, I'm 55. I like that, because it's Fergie fit at 55. Yes. It's cool. Yes. Double um, nickels. <laughs> But it's, it's what it's done, actually, much more than anything, it's given me confidence to walk out here and wave and have and the self-esteem. And twirl. Well, you made me twirl, so... But, um, yeah, I just feel for once... For once, I've done it this time. It's taken me 54 years to try and do it, and this time I've done it. So it's really exciting. Let's talk about that. You, you struggled with weights since your childhood. Uh, you've, you've told in the past of, of the friendship you have with food. Uh, one you develop when you were very young, and maybe yeah. not always the best kinds of friendship. Talk about that well, relationship. Well, I think the most important thing when you really do have a weight problem is that it's more about the self-hatred, self-sabotage, loathing yourself. And when I was 12, mum went to live in Argentina, and then we went to war against Argentina, <laughs> so I never saw her again. And then she died in a car crash. And so what it, what it did was, make, why did she choose to go to Argentina to marry a lovely, good-looking man and run off with him? And he happened to be a polo player and all that. But she chose, in my mind, chose him over me. Therefore, I was worthless. And therefore, my only comfort was food from the age of 12. And so I became completely obsessed with all the nursery kind of food that I had when mum was around, which was sausage rolls, ketchup, egg mayonnaise sandwiches. And, and those are my trigger points. If you, if you see me reaching for an egg mayonnaise sandwich now, it probably means that I've got to look at some real bit of sadness within me. And, oh. and that's why I think that I talk so openly about and with such candidness about weight. And it's not just weight, it's about mind, body, soul. It's about... I was so angry, abandonment issues, all this, blah, blah, blah. You know that, Dr. Oz. I'm, and so when I hadn't really looked at it properly. Mm -hmm. So solutions for behavioral change, that's what I did within myself, is I had to put the oxygen mask on myself, and so I did that. And I think I can really relate what it does to you every day. Wait. A lot of people certainly identify with what you're saying. Uh, they're living it as you describe it. Mm. But you're in the public eye. And yes. the press has been merciless merciless, horrible nicknames. Mm. Would you like to hear some of them? Well, you can remind people if you want. <laughs> I do, I do. Because now it's, I don't know why York and Pork seem to go so well together. Yes. I mean, yes. Can you, I mean no. And so it's the Duchess of Pork. And, and then 82% would rather sleep with a goat than Fergie. And oh. then the, another one was Fergie's fat, frumpy and pointless. And, and, and so in the end, I believed it. 
I actually believed it. And then, of course, I ate more because I believed it. And then about 10 years later, after I went into one of the newspapers, you know, they do lunches and things. And I went in and there was this very small, rotund little bald chap sitting in the corner. And he was roaring with laughter at something. So I went up to him and I said, hello, you know, what's your name? He says, Trevor or something. And I said, I said, oh, well, Trevor, you know, why are you laughing? What's the joke? Is it the size of my bottom or what are you laughing at? You know, because now you just get on with it. And he said, no, 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 it's so nice to meet you because I was so proud of that front page when I called you the Duchess of Pork and oh, I was no. so thrilled. And I suddenly realised that actually it's our mind that causes our demise because he, he was so proud of it. And he didn't know that for 10 years I'd probably eaten more, suffered more, but actually he did me a huge favour because he's pushed me into being able to sit here today, not on script and just talk from my heart. And the power is gone. Yeah. From those words. Right, come on over here. Brittany's got this gold green drink that she adores and she attributes a lot of her success to this. So I wanted to share this very concrete tip with everybody. So if you don't mind, walk us through why this is such a solution for you. It's, it's one of my solutions. Uh, so is fitness, so is walking around the block, so is, I've got a little, like a tool belt of solutions. But this one is because uh, it's. I don't think, I don't know whether you'd like it, but I can't eat all this all day. I, I, I just don't think that's very appetizing. Ginger? No, no. no. <laughs> but so what I did was, and kale, really kale salad, please. I mean. <laughs> I, I love know. kale salad. <laughs> do you? Okay, yeah, good, okay, actually. good. But I, I just, so I decided, and this amazing emulsifier is so good because it keeps the fiber in the juice. And I love that feeling. And I was going to ask you about that, actually. Why is it so important to keep fiber? When you take the fiber out of anything you're eating, yeah. uh, the sugar, that whatever sugar is in there, immediately goes into your bloodstream. Okay. You can keep the fiber in it, because that's how we're supposed to be getting. We're supposed to eat all this. And I respect the fact that not everyone wants to have pineapple or spinach yeah. or celery mm -hmm. and the things we've been talking about. But if you can bottle it up like this, yeah. show everybody if you don't okay, mind how fast this is. And, and can I just say I put apple cider vinegar in, because that really helps me with my gluco, you know, with my hypoglycemic levels. I'm so happy that you figured that out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Noise yes, that. I like the noise. There you go. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So there you go. It's done, done, done. And now, what I decide, this really annoys me. Okay, that's too big, too long, and I won't get through it, and I'll get a green moustache and look ridiculous. <laughs> you will. So I decided that I like tequila sometimes, because I'm... I like tequila yeah. all the time, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not oh, bad. this is marvelous. It's not bad, is it? No, it's not. It's, it's fantastic. But do you know what I really liked about what you just said? At 55, of course, you kick into menopause and all these words you're not allowed to mention, and <laughs> I'm mentioning it, you know? <laughs> so therefore, it, I'm proving it that at 55, you can go through all the changes and still lose weight. Now, could you add tequila to the drink? It probably yes. would work. <laughs> 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 right. Now, you mentioned... Prince Andrew earlier. Yes. Uh, and the fact that I'm sure he must adore this look on you. And I say that because oh, although you've you. been divorced for 20 years, you still live in the same home, the same yes. house. Now, well, there are all these big. rumors. It's why it might be quite big, but you're still really cool. Most people who are divorced don't live together. You're right. So there are these rumors that maybe you'll get remarried to him. Really? Yes. Well, I know. The world, the, the, world, <laughs> the world would love a really happy ending to the fairy tale. But actually, I've decided in, what year are we in? 2015. Uh, I've decided 2015 modern, that we are ending the, a very happy fairy tale because we really love each other and really respect each other. And I just, I, have, I like to talk to him every day. We, we put blessing on what we do together. And we're the best York family unit. And the girls just love it. But they keep saying, Mum, you don't need to get remarried. You're fine as you are, you know? And Dad, you know, Papa, it's fine. You two are so crazy. We are crazy. And we sit there. We sit there and maybe, you know, um, when we're sitting at the kitchen table, we both go, this is really weird. We're, we're the happiest divorced couple in the world. Yeah. That's true for a lot of people. <laughs> I need to ask you about these recent allegations. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. They're scandalous, uh, but uh, there are folks who are saying that Prince... Andrew was involved with an underage woman. Mm -hmm. How do you yes. respond? Uh, well, luckily, Buckingham Palace put out a major denial, which is incredibly important for them to do that. And rare. And rare. And secondly, um, actually, she's changed her story, so they're salacious lies. And, uh, sorry, just to add that bit. You know. <laughs> it's just nice. And, um, and thirdly, um, I think, and, and really, they're so shockingly appalling. Yeah. And if 
really everybody knows my integrity, and I'm so honest, you can tell I'm so honest, that, it, that to defame someone's character, the man that I really care about, my best friend, mm -hmm. the greatest father, the best man, you know, it just won't work. Won't work. No. Thank you for Thank at least addressing you. it so we're all clear on it. Thank you, yeah. Now, in a half year, you know, you were good friends with Princess Diane, huh? Yes. How do you think she'd feel about the men that William and Harry have become? Yeah. They've, uh, they really have become remarkable. And, mm -hmm. and I love to think about her insights about Kate and, and baby George. Well, um, firstly, I miss her so much because she was my best friend. And uh, we were sort of from the age of 14, we, we, we were having fun together. I miss her laughter. She, I mean, she's one of the finest women we know, but also her heart, but her laughter was just, there's no one funnier. I mean, what we used to do together at Buckingham Palace in Windsor Castle, can you imagine? <laughs> oh my gosh, poor royal family, no wonder with us two there. But anyway, right. um, but, but then, of course, then uh, Harry and William, I, I just, they're exceptional, exceptional men. And I mean, I adore Harry being a redhead, so he, he's such fun to be with. I love redheads. Um, redheads. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, but also, I think, it's, I think it's all about love and goodness. And I think that William and Catherine do such a beautiful job loving each other. And little, mm, little George is so sweet, you want to eat him. Yes, edible. And edible, isn't edible he? Edible George. And I just think it, it's, it's just goodness. And I think we need more love in the world. And I think that with the amount of darkness out there and all these poor people going through such sadness, I think it's good that we can shine with light. Well, I love you. I love having thank you here. You, and thanks for all the wisdom you're sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fergie. Thank we'll be right back. Are you addicted to diet soda? The target of growing health concerns. Quitting may not be easy, but we have the plan to wean you off while crushing that sugar craving. Simple steps to kick your diet soda habit once and for all, next. All new odds, you gave up gluten, but now you want it back. Well, today I'm revealing the gluten secret. You don't have to be gluten free. We got a five step plan that is gonna help you add gluten back safely what you can eat now to strengthen your gut so you can enjoy gluten again plus how to stop a food binge when you feel the urge all new odds that's coming up on monday this february on the dr oz show heart disease you have the power to beat it put a little love in your heart all month long the ultimate guide to heart health. The power to save your heart is in your hands. All this February on Oz. You may have started drinking diet soda with the best intentions, to cut calories, reduce sugar, lose weight. But as research develops, the truth is that diet soda has turned out to be more of a villain than a hero. I'll give you some examples. Soda sales, they're down because folks are hearing some of the messages that are coming out there. Major fast food chains are taking out all the soda from their kids' meals, including diet sodas, because they're not panning out. And we hosted a poll on DrOz.com, and 86% of you said that you're actually trying to quit. Now, I know quitting is easier said than done. So I wanted to look out there and see who could tell us a story that might be helpful and bring this alive to you. So Angie is here today. She doesn't know that she was brought to the show by her buddy, Janine. Sorry, Angie. Janine says her best friend hasn't gone a day without drinking diet soda for the past 20 years. Is that true? Yeah. Let, me, well, let me come over here. I have a little hand mic. I'm sorry to embarrass you like this. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I have tried to quit so many times, Dr. Oz, but I love it so much. And all my friends have quit. My friend Jill behind me, it's her birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Was, was it hard to quit? Quit because of you. Oh. Four years ago was my New Year's resolution. It's the only one I've stuck with. <laughs> well, I don't drink it anymore. So how come you haven't made a New Year's resolution? Well, I have many times, but I love when I go to pick up my kids from school every day in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. It's a pick-me-up. I like to drink it in the car while I'm waiting in the car line. It's just my routine. I love it. So, Janine, you were kind enough. Brave yes. enough to bring your friend here un unexpectedly. Are you, are you mad at her, by the way? Yeah, I can't yeah. believe. <laughs> we can talk about that offline. Yeah. Right, so why is it that you care about your friend so much you want her to quit? 
Well, because personally, I stopped about a year ago, about a year ago. And when I had my kids, I felt like my memory was not as good. And I thought, well, could just be the kids. I read that it is not good for you at all, the aspartame in it. I've been telling her this, but since I quit, I feel like my memory has gotten better. Good. And I think it would help you. <laughs> so are you willing to consider a program I'm going to give you today? Absolutely, to yes. Yeah. Help me. I want to quit. So I'm going to help you the way I help someone that I care about a lot. Okay. My best friend actually is Dr. Royzen. So we actually held him over. So if you not, I may remember this, but a few years ago, I turned in my best friend, Dr. Royzen. Here's what happened. Now, there's someone that I think you may be surprised to hear has a problem very similar to yours. Wow. And I've known it for a long time. Okay. Take, take a look. It's 5.30 in the afternoon, just seen my last patient, so I need another one of these, because I'm going to be here a couple more hours. So she's considering coming off the, 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 the soda kick she's on. How about you? I'm off after today. <laughs> so Dr. Rosa did battle his own soda addiction, and now he has a plan to help you quit yours because he's been through it. So you were drinking five years ago 30 diet sodas a day. He would come to the house and pre-order pallets of this stuff. My kids would make fun of Dr. Royzen. So what happened? What was the final straw that made you quit? The data were starting to accumulate greater and greater that this wasn't the healthiest thing. All right, so it's intense when you try to quit uh, some addictions. It's especially intense when you try to do it with caffeine and diet soda in particular. That's why, you know, when, in order to combat those symptoms, you really have to be able to simultaneously support yourself while at the same time you're getting off the drink. So let's go to a plan to quit diet soda once and for all developed by Dr. Royzen. First, he says you've got to develop a quitting schedule. Why was that so important for folks in your practice? Why does it work for people today? Well, because you've got to commit to it. The only way you really can quit successfully is you say, I'm going to commit to it and then go public with your plan. So you've got to say, this is the day. You helped me go public, obviously, with it. <laughs> um, but you've got to say, let's do a schedule so that I know what I'm going to do and that others can hold me accountable. So walk us through it. So first week, you reduce by 25%. So if you have 12 cans a day, you go to nine cans the second week. The next week, you quit by 50%. The next week you go down by 75%, and then the last week you're off totally. And that's the way you do it, with some regularity, and then, if you will, a buddy, and a commitment that's public. So there's a ritual around most addictions. Diet soda is no different. Walk me through how the ways we're gonna beat back some of those addictions, that those rituals. Well, there really are three rituals with diet soda, if you will. One is caffeine. So you get up in the morning, you want a diet soda, so what you can do is substitute, if you will, caffeine. So this is, if you will, coffee. The second so thing- Iced coffee. Iced coffee. So it has the coolness and it has the caffeine that you need. Exactly. And it feels and the same. It, exactly, so you, you match it, you match the container with what you want, your hand. Because, you know, it, it's a habit. You get up in the morning, you pop a diet soda. You, get, you have breakfast, you pop a diet soda. You end breakfast, you but, pop but, a diet yeah, soda. Some of us do that. <laughs> <laughs> You have sex, you pop a diet soda. <laughs> Hopefully afterwards. Um, but, but you do it with regularity. So the, the three things are the feel, if you will, and the caffeine. Yeah. So you've got to withdraw from that and you find a substitute. The second thing is the fuzziness. So you like the carbonated beverage, you can go to seltzer water. The third thing is, if you will, the uh, taste and the sweetness. So you can go to green tea if you will, and oh. you can combine yeah. the green tea and the fuzziness together in this formula. It, it, it's a fizzy drink that has caffeine, less of it, but other nutrients to give you that same boost. Right. So okay. you capture this physical feel, the temperature, the fizziness, combine different forms of caffeine to get you there. There's not the fizzy water now that will get you there. And, and it's got some sweetness in it or some taste to it that substitutes for the sugar taste. Right. How about the cravings that you often have uh, and that you satiate with, with diet sodas oftentimes? So you can have things in the evening, if you will. That's, that's a time when at least it was toughest for me. Or as snacks, that in fact, if, if you will, a chocolate-coated co banana or, um, if you will, some chocolate and raspberries. So you, you get some healthy food at the same time as a substitute. The honest is getting hungry now. So <laughs> tracking progress is a big part of this. If you're going to quit 
diet soda. Dr. Orson mentioned this. You gotta be public about it. Let everybody know. So here's how we're gonna do it today. Start this right now. I want you to change your profile picture on Facebook. Two, for example, Dr. Roizen's will be this from now on. Here's his picture. See, <laughs> the straw is crossing his face. Put that out there, let everyone know, spread the word. You can find the plan to quit diet soda on DrOz.com. I'll be right back. Coming up next, are you a left side sleeper or a right side sleeper? Do you prefer to sleep on your back or on your stomach? Could your sleep position give you clues about your health? Find out how to decode what the different positions mean. Coming up next. This February on the Dr. Oz Show. Heart disease, you have the power to beat it. Put a little love in your heart. All month long, the ultimate guide to heart health. Feel young and energetic. Be there for your family. Stay active for your kids. You control your health. You control your destiny. The power to save your heart is in your hands. All this February on the Dr. Oz Show. Did your sleep physician give you clues about your overall health? Chiropractor Steve Shoshani says yes, and he's here to decode what the different positions mean. Now we can spend up to eight hours, hopefully a night, lying in the same position, night after night, we do our entire lives, and it's probably bound to have some effect. What do you see in your practice? Absolutely, patients come in all the time with neck, shoulder, back pain, and on the intake form, one of the questions is how did you do it? It's always slept funny, how many people here sleep funny when they wake up with a pain in the neck or pain in the back? Or they got so, beaten up. Yeah, and it's like, well, they didn't get into a fight. They just slept, so right. they're sleeping funny. So we're going to find out how to right. prevent it. So this is sort of like palm reading. We're going to take you down here, examine you and how you're doing things, and then predict some of the health problems you're probably having based on a lot of experience. Okay, who wants to volunteer? Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I love that outfit. I love the outfit. What's your name? Susan. Susan. Yes. All right, I'll paint the picture for you. You just finished watching Real Housewives. By the time you go to bed, you got to work in the morning. I want you to get on the bed here and show Dr. Shoshani how you would lie down to go to sleep. Okay. I lie down like, like this. Oh. Like that. So mm. cozy and cuddly. Mm. That so nice. Does that feel good? Oh, I think I'm ready to take a nap. Oh, sure, sure. <sighs> <laughs> All right, yes. Steve, what can you tell from seeing this position about what might be going on? So stomach sleeper is my least favorite position out of all positions. Mm. One of the reasons being is because your head is turned one way all day. So imagine all day keeping your head turned to the left for eight hours. It's going to do a number to your neck. So your spinal cord is in your neck. So imagine your arm and that Indian burn that oh. happens in your arm all day, that's what you're doing to your neck. So whenever those nerves come down to arm, you could probably have carpal tunnel syndrome, neck pain, shoulder pain, and also vital organs get nerve supply from the neck too. So you could probably get, if you have a chronic disease like fibromyalgia, it's probably not a good idea to sleep on your stomach. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Any of those aches and pains happening to you? Uh, the, the neck. It does. Yeah, yeah, the back. So how are we gonna fix this? Because I don't think we're gonna change people's sleeping patterns. One of the things I'd recommend is getting a flatter, thinner pillow so your head is more neutral and your head is not extended backwards. Because when you have your neck extended, it puts a lot of pressure and stress. So, give so let's you. swap pillows. Can we grab that back? Good. And try to put your head there and turn your head. You're a lot lower and your head's not as extended. And also another thing, let's do that travel pillow, is to try to put this pillow underneath your pelvis. So lift this up there under your pelvis, lay down, and that way your abdomen is lower and your spine is in one neutral position. Okay. So it's a little bit so what easier. What do you think? Just I think this feels pretty good. Do you put the head right here? Yeah, right there and turn your head one way there, if you okay. have to sleep on your stomach. She's too sleepy to answer. <laughs> <sighs> Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. All right. So who sleeps in a, thank you. Who sleeps in a different position? Different position than that. You have different position? All right, come on over here. Show, show us what position, what's your first name? Andrea. Andrea, okay, yes. same thing, Andrea. Let me get just one set up here. Go ahead, get clean stuff, go ahead. Show us how you lie down there. Oh. <laughs> Cause I have a daughter, so she'll usually sleep like right here on me. It's like a so. Spider-Man pose. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Shoshani, what do you think about this? Well, uh, this, the back position is my favorite position. It's the best position for your neck. Uh, one of the things I would recommend is if you're sleeping like this, to put a pillow to support your cervical spine. But some of the problems I would see with this is the open legs, you may suffer from inner thigh problems and also some lower back problems. 
So for the legs, what do you, you put something? Underneath? I would get a travel pillow, put it underneath the knees. So bend your knees here. Underneath the knees, what that does, that flattens out the lumbar spine, taking pressure off the facets and those weight-bearing joints so you'd have less back pain, and also helps with the knee, putting them in a more neutral position. Yeah, see, I, I sleep in my back also, and I put a bigger pillow there. Oh, yes, yeah, try, check that out. Okay. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. All right. Let me hear from a, who's a side sleeper? You guys side sleepers? Side sleeper? Oh, please. Now she's being modest. Look, we well, always know when you come to the doctor out show, you can get called down here. So what's your first name? Julie. Julie. All right, Julie, so get in the position that doesn't compromise you. I need my husband here, but I'll pretend. Right. There we are. All right. Uh, what can you learn from this position? Well, this is the most common position most Americans sleep in, the side-lying position, but you'll probably have a tendency to have neck pain, some lower mm -hmm. back pain, and obviously some knee pain from this position. And also people that lay on their side tend to have more acid reflux. Any of those problems seem familiar to you? My neck sometimes does hurt. So what, what can we do to make side sleeping a little bit more comfortable for folks and avoid some of these, these issues? So let me grab this pillow away from you. So one of the most important things is keeping your cervical spine and your neck neutral. So when you lay on your side, lay on your side, you want to keep your nose in line with your sternum, which is your chest right here, and also pillow between the knees, taking pressure off the lower back. <laughs> oh. Oh, so that's a much more comfortable position. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Is, is that more comfortable? <laughs> yes. This, yeah, get one point, serious note here. Uh, the gastric mm -hmm. reflux is an important point. If you lie on your left side down, it actually helps you with reflux if you have that problem. And I love the idea of a pillow between your knees. If you're putting someone to sleep for surgery and they're going to be on their side, we always put a pillow beneath their, uh, between their knees to avoid the pressure on their lower back. That's why so many folks get up in the morning and feel completely washed out. Thank you very much. You're here to do that. All right. To find out how your sleep position could be affecting your health, go to DrRoz.com. Be right back. Next, can you lose weight with a slow cooker or is it a crock? We're uncovering the best crock pot recipes to help you slim down. The secret ingredients that make them skinny. Our search for the tastiest and healthiest slow cooker dishes. Coming up next. Have a health question? Ask on DrOz.com and get answers directly from Dr. Oz and his team of experts. No question is off limits. All new Oz. You gave up gluten, but now you want it back. Well, today I'm revealing the gluten secret. You don't have to be gluten-free. we got a five-step plan uh, that's going to help you add gluten back safely. What you can eat now to strengthen your gut so you can enjoy gluten again. Plus, how to stop a food binge when you feel the urge. All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. I heard a lot of viewers are losing weight with their slow cooker. So I reached out to Oz Nation in search of the very best and skinny slow cooker recipes. And my med students have been evaluating them all day long. They're calculating the calories, the fat, the sodium, the fiber, and of course, the taste. My candidates are here, the last, the final 10. You have no idea which recipes have won. I suspect you're a bit nervous. Yeah. 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 Nervous? Definitely. Uh, you, I don't want you, any of you to be nervous about this because I'm so proud of each of you for making them. They're fantastic. But I have to award three winners. So I'm going to start off, okay? The bronze coming in at number three is da -da -da. Tanny. Come on down, Tanny. <laughs> she looks good. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited too. It's awesome. <laughs> this is the best. Yes, and I want to tell you my crock pot is 20 years old. It is? It doesn't even have handles. My grandmother, Nanny, gave it to me. She'll be when very I got proud married. of you now. Yes, so thank you, Nanny and Gaggy. <laughs> you put it to good use. All right, so tell everyone about okay. your recipe. What's it so called? This is so healthy. It's a sweet potato quinoa chili. Uh, it has low sodium organic vegetable broth. One sweet mm. potato diced, a cup of dry quinoa, black beans, red beans, garlic, garlic powder, onion powder, and then you just slow cook it. All right, so let's see how it's stacked up nutritionally. Oh. Obviously, the reason you're doing so well is because it has some great nutrients in it, but you also had 13 grams of fiber per serving. Fiber. That was the highest amount of all the recipes. I knew it, I knew I was gonna win. Are you very regular? Yeah. yeah. She's regular, that's why. Penny, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's see who number two is. I know you're all nervous, the tension mounts. Number two, 
is Samara. Samara, come on over. So oh. excited. Are you, who's, who's the real? Are they, who's the, oh, that's okay. Well, come over, well, come over here for a second. I, I can't. Uh, here, Samara, I'll put this in while you. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's what's your name? Sue Ann. Sue Ann. I'm so excited. It, uh, it's sort of, well, not quite No, not quite. What, what I heard was. What, what did you make? What did I make? I made a vegetarian vegan chili. Vegan chili? Yes. And you love it? Yeah, I love it. You know what? I'm going to put all, all of these wonderful recipes on, on drrock.com. Yeah, and they'll know Suzanne's the one who, 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 who <laughs> reacted. got overexcited. And, and, and very proud you did that. Thank oh, you. thank all you. Right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> how are you, Samara? I'm good. How are you doing? So this stuff looks so good. I'm about to taste it. I haven't tasted it yet. Okay. Please describe to everyone what you call it and what do you put in. Okay. How do you make it? Um, it's a turkey meatloaf. Um, I put in a frying pan. I put a little bit of olive oil. I put onions um, and I put garlic and I kind of like saute it a little bit. Then I put it in a bowl and I have like salt, pepper, ketchup. Um, I put low fat plain yogurt. I put ketchup in it. I put quick oats as opposed to breadcrumbs. So that makes it a little bit healthy. Um, and then I just kind of shape it the way I want it and I put it in here and I cook it for five hours on low. And would you be willing to share it with Su uh, Sue Ann over there? Um, <laughs> yes, I would. Sue Ann and I actually have become friends now. Oh, you have? Definitely yes, share you it bonded with in a yes. very unique way. We bonded, way. yes. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's see why your slow cook meal cooks second place. Why is it so good for you? Because it has 35 grams, 35 grams of protein per serving. The highest amount of any of the recipes Thank you. Sir. All right, I need a little drum roll here. It's time for number one, the recipient of the coveted Golden Slow Cooker. Number one on our list is Robin. Robin, come on down, Robin. She has won the Golden Slow Cooker. Oh, I'm getting this on here. Now, I'm not going to burden you with that slow cooker yet. Thank you. But you'll notice it's a real 14 karat gold. Not. I love it. You I'm going to have to schlep that back to Canada. <laughs> you'll take it back. Are you from Canada? <laughs> I am. What part? I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Well, thank you for making the long trip here. <laughs> so uh, you must have an acceptance speech. You want to take it away? Actually, I have no acceptance speech except thank you for loving my food. Oh, oh I'm sorry. We have to. I'm sorry. We're going <laughs> to. the Oscars. I'm done. That's all the time we have for that. I appreciate it. I'm done. <laughs> All right, so what made this so special for you? How do you make this? I start off with um, stewed tomatoes, and I put in the chickpeas, and then I spice it like crazy, and let it simmer on high for about an mm. hour, just to get everything mm. bubbling mm. together, mm. and then I layer in the onions, and then the diced potatoes, and then the rest of the vegetables. And that cooked for about eight hours yesterday. You know what, besides the fact that you, yes. you wanna try it? Yes. All right, here. <laughs> Sue Ann, come over here, Sue Ann. <laughs> We'll get this. So, would you mind taking this to the audience, please? I Just pret love pretend to. it's yours. I will. <laughs> so here's the thing. I want to. I want to brag about you guys. I'm sorry. Your skinny <laughs> slow cooker meal was all around the best. It had 116 calories, 1.5 grams of fat, only 150 milligrams of sodium. Unbelievable. Unbelievable Canada ever. Rocks. Canada rocks. <laughs> all right. All these skinny slow cooker recipes will be on DrRoz.com. I'm going to pin them on my Pinterest board as well. We'll be right back. There you are. Next, can Dr. Raz not only save a patient on his OR table, but save a second life in the process? Well, that's my baby. <laughs> yeah, these are the kind of cases where you save two lives, not one. Their story can change your life. You see the fear in her mother's eyes for both her and her daughter. Next. Whoever said a doctor's visit isn't fun has obviously never been to the Dr. Oz show. Is that right? <laughs> Make your appointment today. Go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up for free tickets. <laughs> this February on the Dr. Oz show. Heart disease. You have the power to beat it. Put a little love in your heart. All month long, the ultimate guide to heart health. Feel young and energetic. Be there for your family. Stay active for your kids. You control your health. You control your destiny. The power to save your heart is in your hands. All this February on The Dr. Oz Show. All 
month long, we are putting a little love in your heart. And today, I want to take you through one of the moments that I live for as a doctor. When I have the potential to save not just the patient on my OR table, but a second life in the process. That's exactly what happened when I met Rosemary and her daughter. Today I'm meeting with Rosemary Maloney. Now she's been having chest pains and her doctor sent her to me after doing some scans of her heart. Can I uh, show you your films? I want to show you why I'm concerned about them. These are the blood vessels that feed the heart. So you notice how nice and big that looks? Right. But look at this one. You see how thick it is here? Yes. It's supposed to be just as thick here. Oh. That's a big blockage. Come, let's talk. Let's talk. You all right? Yeah. I didn't mean to scare you guys. No, no, no. I didn't take it as seriously as what it is. She can't do a thing. If she pushes herself carrying a couple of bags, 10 yards, the pain is so severe she has to stop. You have any idea why it happened? It's the kind of foods that I eat, the fatty foods, the greasy foods that I eat. If you begin to lose weight, within a week, everything begins to get better. Within a week, if you can change around what you're contributing to this problem of the hardening of your arteries, right. I can fix what's already happened. Then you won't have this problem for the rest of your life. We're gonna put a catheter in her heart to determine the extent of the blockage. Then we'll know if she needs either a stent to improve the blood flow in her heart, or in the worst case, open heart surgery. I want you to have confidence in yourself. Yes. No matter what anyone says, you have that little beautiful daughter of yours, you're focusing on her, on her and you realize that she's gonna treat herself like you're treating you. Right. So I don't want you doing things that aren't good for you because we're sacrificing you and her if you do. Right, right. You clear? Yes, I'm crystal clear. Believe me, I wanna do this. I really wanna do this. Rosemary Maloney is here today for her cardiac catheterization. Oh, that's my baby. <laughs> did she talk to you about what's going to go on today? Yeah. What's his... What did she say? She said that um, she's doing a cardiac cat catheterization <laughs> and um, she's getting a stent. If she needs it, she's going to get a stent. Yeah, yeah. Mama's blockage is right smack in the middle of everything. Right. It's, uh, it's not the best place to have a blockage. There is a possibility that in the course of that, it likely get complicated. A little nervous? A little bit, yeah. yeah that's normal. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank you. Well, I love meeting Alyssa. Now, you know, these are the kind of cases where you save two lives, not one. Yeah. Because you see the fear in her mother's eyes for both her and her daughter. Yeah. I'm just afraid that um, since it's in a bad spot, it's not like an easy, an easy fix. Bye. 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 Love you more. Rosemary will be awake during the entire procedure. This wire will be pushed into the heart. Over this wire, we'll put in the other catheters that will do the testing. You okay? We made a small incision near Rosemary's groin, and now we're staking this catheter through her body, all the way up to her heart. So Rosemary, we have the catheter. Now it's across where that area of concern is, right at the top of the heart. All right, here's the moment of truth, guys. That's unbelievable. I don't see any thickening of the wall no, anywhere. Looks good. You agree? Yeah. So Dr. Williams has looked in that artery, yeah. and it doesn't look like there's a blockage there we need to do anything about. Really? I think that the ball's back in your court. Oh, right. <laughs> I think it's up to you now. Right. Yeah. She's doing fine. We don't think that blockage was nearly as bad as it looked on the angiogram. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey. That was quick. Good news. Love you, Ami. Now you got to lose this weight. I'll do it with you, Rose. And it was just um, a very scary warning, like what could happen in the future. So it's my um, second chance to make sure it doesn't happen. I'm happy to report that Rosemary has lost 30 pounds. Since her procedure, she's cut out all the soda from her diet, which is one of the reasons she thinks she's successful. And her daughter is her teammate, her biggest cheerleader, as she continues to battle towards health. So now their story can change your life. I'm going to show you why. When you're someone like Rosemary, 
and you've got a heart, a beautiful heart as hers is, you have these little arteries on the surface that sometimes over time, although they're supposed to bring blood, nourishing blood to the heart, they start to get disease. So the blood vessel itself doesn't let the blood come through. In fact, the plaque, as you saw in her case, starts to get larger. Sometimes it gets so big, builds up so thick, that it limits the amount of blood that can get to the heart muscle. Without that blood, your heart muscle can't function. But by changing the way you eat and the way you exercise, you can alter that. You can stop that plaque from progressing. You can even let the artery open up a little bit, dilate up, so that the effect of it might become a lot less. What I'm saying, everybody, is that you control your own destiny. Spread the word. We'll be right back. All new odds. You gave up gluten, but now you want it back. Well, today I'm revealing the gluten secret. You don't have to be gluten-free. We got a five-step plan uh, that's gonna help you add gluten back safely. What you can eat now to strengthen your gut so you can enjoy gluten again. Plus, how to stop a food binge when you feel the urge. All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. This February on the Dr. Oz Show. Heart disease. You have the power to beat it. Put a little love in your heart. All month long, the ultimate guide to heart health. The power to save your heart is in your hands. All this February on Oz. All new Oz. You gave up gluten, but now you want it back. Well, today I'm revealing the gluten secret. You don't have to be gluten-free. We got a five-step plan uh, that's gonna help you add gluten back safely. What you can eat now to strengthen your gut so you can enjoy gluten again. Plus, how to stop a food binge when you feel the urge. All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. One of the questions I hear most often is, Dr. Oz, how can I get a good night's sleep? So I decided to look at the animal kingdom for some new snoozing inspiration. Here's a couple of wonderful examples. Giraffes sleep, they do, but they do it all folded up. It doesn't look very comfortable. I couldn't do that, I don't think. But here's the good news. They only need two hours a night of sleep, so it works for them. Snakes, look at snakes. They sleep coiled up, all curled into each other, but their eyes are wide open. They don't trust anybody. They don't have any choice. They don't have any eyelids, so they actually can't ever close their eyes. But I think the most fascinating of all, of all the sleepers out there, are the dolphins. Because dolphins sleep with one eye open and one eye closed. And not only that, they sleep with just half of their brain at any time. So they can go back and forth, only resting half their brain, which gives a whole new meaning to being half asleep. Now it's time for In Case You Missed It. First, we also had fun discovering what your sleep position reveals about your health. A very brave side sleeper showed us how the spine gets out of line in this position. And the tip, of course, is to take a travel-sized pillow between the knees, keeps you lined up. We do this in the operating room when patients have to be on their side for long periods of time. It really helps a lot with lower back issues. Finally, please be careful of dubious people online that make it seem like I'm endorsing their products, because I do not. To see a full list of our trusted sponsors and partners, you can go to DrOz.com. And Oz Nation, remember to tell your friends what you learned today. I'll see you next time.